Today we've set up two red ball hoods and an end cap on a table out in the shop. And we want to illustrate what happens to the air movement inside of a hood when you have a breeze blowing against the hoods. And we've gone ahead and set this up the way that the hoods would be set up to be run in the field. We put a piece of plexiglass on the end of one of the hoods so that we can look inside of it and uh, better explain how the hood is set up and how the air movement uh, happens inside of the hood. So this uh, hood that's set up in uh, the way it would be in the field. Uh, normal spray nozzles have a specification from the manufacturers that their height should be 20 inches above the canopy for the target area that you want to get to. We have set this hood up to be set at 20 inches down. So when that happens, uh, you see that these front curtains in here have curled over a bit. And that's a normal setup because you want the curtains to come down and seal against the face of the crop so that that creates the shield for the air velocity that's outside of the hood. Down on the end of the hood where it curves around the end cap, that portion is normally two inches longer and that two inches would go down into the crop canopy and seal the end of the hood. Since we're running on a tabletop today, we've had to trim off two inches of that so that that end will seal down on the tabletop. The backside hoods, or excuse me, the backside curtains that you see here are just hanging down and they would normally do that. They are longer than the front curtains so they trail back behind the hood and seal on the backside. Uh, we've also taken and drilled a hole in the top of this and inserted a rod down there and put a tape on it so that we can put a wind meter inside that hole we've drilled in the tabletop and measure the air movement inside the hood while we have a breeze blowing on the outside of the hood. That's set at 20 inches also because of the sprayer uh, tip requirement to be 20 inches above your target zone. So we'll be starting up the fans now and develop some breeze against the hoods and then we'll go on the inside and use the wind meter to determine how the air is moving inside the hood. Now we turn on our fans and we put the wind meter in front of the hoods here to determine how much airflow we're going to be dealing with today. And it looks like we're going to be in that 14 mile an hour range for wind speed. 13 and a half to 14 miles an hour at wind speed. So we'll go back and put this inside the hood now and see what the airflow is there. I will put the meter up inside of the hood and I will set it down again. Uh, you won't be able to see the display on the meter but you'll notice that the turbine on the meter is not turning. It's just sitting there and fluttering back and forth. So our wind speed is zero. We'll go up to the three inch mark. And again, you can see that the turbine is not turning. And up to the five inch mark. And the turbine is not turning. Now remember, the outside of the hood still has a 14 mile an hour breeze blowing against it. And you can tell that when you look at the front windscreen you can see that the windscreen is pulsating which indicates that the air pressure and the wind speed is still on the outside of the hood but inside we have zero flow. To the 7 inch mark now and we have no speed at all. To the 9 inch mark and we have no air movement. Nine inch mark, no air movement. It's still blowing outside 14 miles an hour. 13 inches, no movement. 15, no movement inside, 14 miles an hour 17 outside. 17 inches, no movement. 19 inches, no movement, all the way up to the top. 20 inches, no movement. So even though the wind is blowing 14 miles an hour outside this hood, 
as we've traveled up the entire distance, we have not seen any air movement. So what we'll do now is we're going to take the, and, and insert a small rod with a little red flag on it on the inside of the hood to see what we have as far as air movement inside the hood using that method too. So you see that there's quite a bit of air movement on the outside of this hood. And we'll stick this through the little hole we put in here. And we'll see when we get the flag inside, we notice right away that we do not see any air movement. We'll go down to the target zone where the spray would be contacting the crop canopy. And we see that that flag is not showing any evidence of moving. And we come along here and we do the same thing in the middle of the hood. And again, we see there's just no movement of the flag. We'll go up on the top side again and travel the distance here. And you see, well, there's no movement there either. And this will be typical as you go down the hood. So there we have a comparison of the Red Ball hooded sprayer, the effect of air movement inside the hood when we've got a 14 mile an hour breeze blowing against it. It demonstrates the effectivity of the spray hood in minimizing spray drift.